Welcome. Hello, everybody. Good morning and welcome to the Diatomic UK Accelerator Application Support Webinar. It's great to see many of you here with us today. My name is Ravi Kumar and I am the Accelerator Program Manager and I work for the Connected Places Catapult. So first, we will begin with a brief video which will introduce to you the Connected Places Catapult, who we are and what we do. For millennia, cities have been places where bright ideas spark. From the earliest riverside trading posts that turned into today's sprawling megacities in the digital global economy, cities can create positive experiences for people, always connected by technology. And when connected places work well, it's good for people and the planet. But making a connected place succeed is hard. There's loads of stakeholders, businesses, regulators, and community groups who want to be involved across every mode of transport, every type of building, the infrastructure that underpins them, and the data and digital platforms that connect them. All of this is needed to help people, communities, neighborhoods, and local businesses to prosper. Now, more than ever, we need our connected places to succeed. We are in a climate emergency. Rapid urbanization means three quarters of us will be living in a city by 2050. And new technologies are revolutionizing the way that we live, the way we work, and the way we travel. Creating fantastic opportunities for innovation, jobs, and growth. At Connected Places Catapult, we connect people, places, and businesses for a future of sustainable growth and prosperity. We are the UK's innovation accelerator for cities, transport, and place leadership. We are trusted across government, industry, and academia, connecting new technologies, business models, and investment opportunities. So join with us and be better connected for a future of sustainable growth and prosperity. Thank you. So on today's agenda, we have a range of speakers and we will be covering the accelerator the challenges and the application process in detail. So first, we will begin by going through the program overview, where I will provide further detail on what Diatomic UK is about and what the program is aiming to achieve. We will then go through the challenges that have been set and identified on behalf of our industry partner, which is Birmingham City Council, and what this means for the accelerator itself. My colleague, Vita Woods from Steamhouse, will go into detail about the challenges and the process we have gone through to arrive at these challenges. And then we'll go and talk a bit about the program application form. And we have a demonstration there from our colleague, Jericho Torres, who will be able to explain and explore the application form and the interface. So you'll have a bit of insight into that. And we will finish the webinar with a Q&A panel session where my colleagues, Venetia Hulse from the Connected Places Catapult and Chris Holmes from Birmingham City Council will be able to answer any questions raised during the webinar. Next slide, please. So as indicated in the video that you just watched, the Connected Places Catapult is one of nine innovation centers set up by Innovate UK to grow the UK economy by accelerating technology in different areas of strategic importance across the country. So for example, we have catapults in areas such as medicines discovery, energy systems, satellite applications, digital and advanced manufacturing, just to name a few. Our domain at CPC is focused around transport systems and places. So we, we basically are here to enable sustainable and accessible transport solutions and places for people to live and work, in effect, increasing their well-being. And as a result, we run accelerator programs at the Connected Places Catapult. And the value that we provide with our accelerator programs is that we provide SMEs with the opportunities to showcase their technical innovations and for them to access market expertise. 
We have a network of over 4,500 SMEs with many from varying backgrounds and experience. We also run regular events and we also scout, scope and recruit suitable SMEs to apply to our program. So we're quite proactive in our approach and identifying those SMEs that will be suitable. One of the important aspects of our accelerators is that we have a neutral convening power, which allows us to provide access to market actors, commercial partners, policymakers, and the potential for funding opportunities. Next slide, please. Diatomic UK, which is a mouthful, stands for Digital Innovation Transformative Change. So it's made up of an acronym of that word. It's a collaborative project which is being delivered by CPC in partnership with a range of organisations, which include Birmingham City Council, the Birmingham Chamber of Commerce, and Birmingham City University Steamhouse. So Diatomic UK, the programme aims to build the innovation capability and capacity of the West Midlands, driving economic growth, prosperity and the reputation of the region. Diatomic is focused on improving the management of housing, parks and waste on behalf of Birmingham City Council and is also looking for new ideas around how to engage better with local people and improve training and knowledge sharing amongst service delivery teams. Next slide, please. Next slide. So we will do this in two ways. Firstly, we have the accelerator program itself, which is a six month challenge led accelerator program that is looking to select and work with up to 12 SMEs and who will be supported with paid opportunities to trial their innovations. Secondly, successful applicants will also receive mentoring, including procurement and pitch coaching, business development and trial support and opportunities to showcase their solutions. So of the 12 SMEs we are looking at selecting, it is expected that around five SMEs will be selected to carry out full trials of up to three months, whereas the rest of the cohort will be doing lighter testing, which may consist of a few days to a couple of weeks. We will decide which SMEs are best suited to full trials based on their trial plan and their solution fit. So whatever they're proposing to do on the application forms. Next slide, please. So why apply? We obviously want you to apply as we feel this program is invaluable to SMEs and it presents an opportunity for SMEs to respond to real world challenges set by key partners, Birmingham City Council. So it is a potential route to market and it is an opportunity to showcase solutions to other partner organizations across the West Midlands. Uh, along with the paid trials, SMEs will also receive additional commercial support, as I've already mentioned. Next slide, please. Um, talk a bit about the program structure, if you can go to the next slide, please. So the program itself will run from October to April, and it will be split primarily into two parts. So the first part is um, you have two months to design the testbed solution. And then you have up to four months to actually implement the innovation, allowing um, yourself, the SME, to test and showcase that solution. During the second part, SMEs will have access to workshops, events, one-to-one -one mentorship, coaching, and it will all culminate in a demo day where the SME will have the opportunity to demonstrate the solution to key industry partners. Next slide, please. So now I'd like to hand over to my colleague, Vita Woods, who is the innovation manager from BCU Steamhouse and who was responsible for establishing the challenges for the accelerator so that she can explain this in further detail. Over to you, Vita. Hi, everyone. Um, thanks for joining us today. Uh, thanks for the introduction as well, Ravi. Um, as Ravi mentioned, I'm the innovation manager at Steamhouse. Steamhouse is a um, centre for collaborative innovation that is powered by Birmingham City University. We work with organisations, businesses um, within the region to identify the challenges that they're facing and come up with new products, services or programmes in response. And we were brought on board for the challenge articulation phase of the diatomic programme, so to work with the council um, and the different stakeholders within the council to um, 
really dig deeper into the challenges they're facing in their day-to-day jobs um, and activities and articulate those as briefs for you to respond to. So uh, next slide, please. So we started with our challenge theme. So across the um, directorates of housing and also waste management, which includes um, parks, we had different um, themes that came through. So these were uh, health, safety and compliance, repairs and maintenance, decarbonisation and energy, street scene intelligence. So the kind of um, what you see on the street, the state of the streets um, and waste vehicle, uh, waste fleet vehicles as well. Um, and it's just worth noting that the parks element um, was to do with the uh, waste and the street scene intelligence rather than sort of the more recreational side of, of park usage as well. So that was our starting point. And these have been identified by the council prior to our workshops for them to really sort of have a jumping off point to start discussing um, the challenges they're facing. Uh, next slide, please. So um, what we did, if you can see sort of on the image uh, where it says challenge themes, we began by really getting out um, from all of our participants what they felt the challenges were within their their day to day jobs, uh, the projects that they run um, and, and then the way that they work but looking at things both from their own perspective and the perspective of the citizen. So really understanding um, the challenges they're facing, but how those challenges or um, how um, the citizens respond to the situation that they might find in their kind of their home, their lives, their work, um, their community. And um, so that there's a real citizen focus to all of these challenges, because essentially the priority here is to um, improve the delivery of public services. So we heard some really interesting things, some that you might expect to hear, some that that you didn't. Um, and by sort of viewing those through those different lenses within each challenge theme, we were able to come up with sort of clusters of, um, of challenges that were coming through. So um, we heard a lot around kind of resources and efficiencies, um, looking at safety, looking at compliance, looking at the homes that people live in and the, the kind of the right to live in healthy, um, greener homes. We also heard around frustrations from citizens about maybe the way that services are um, are delivered, but also um, really interestingly, what came through was this idea of there being a um, the environmental requirement um, and commitments of the council, um, and then the expected service delivery from the citizens was quite different at times, and it led to some conflict and tension. Um, we also heard that there was kind of a, a lack of um, connection between data. So things that sort of anecdotally or things that through experience that the service delivery teams knew were happening weren't necessarily coming through um, uh, the data and weren't being connected so that sort of mitigations could be put in place and that services to, could be delivered um, in line with that. So one of the wrongs that really stood out to me was that we heard from um, the waste team that on hot sunny days, people go out to uh, watch the planes take off and because there aren't enough bins, the rubbish doesn't get put in the bins. The rubbish then flies onto the um, runways of the airport. Um, which doesn't cause necessarily a problem directly for the planes taking off, but then you get birds landing, which then causes a problem for planes. So all of that, that anecdotal information that isn't necessarily coming through um, just through data alone or isn't being uh, connected upon. So there were some really interesting um, things that we heard. So we had heaps of information. We had um, a huge amount of uh, challenges that had been articulated um, and come through but one of the most important steps was around prioritizing and scoring those because you can't um, solve every challenge unfortunately um, so after we'd done our clustering um, and we had some clear themes coming out across those directorates we started looking at challenge uh, scoring those across different metrics so the first metric that we looked at was from the council's perspective so how much backing that the challenge might have so um, how it relates to the council's um, longer term strategy um, and then also looking at the complexity to solve it so whether it might be easy to solve or whether it's something that would be really complicated to solve and, and is um, built in with uh, lots of other uh, different systems and processes that are going on. Then we also looked at it from uh, the innovator perspective um, and thought uh, 
sort of subjectively about how attractive these challenges might be and the number of um, potential solutions that might come out from them. And then we also looked at things from a citizen perspective. So how much support might these challenges um, get from uh, citizens if they were to be solved and what the impact on citizens might be. And one of the things that was quite interesting that came through on the citizen perspective that it was felt that whilst um, some of the challenges, if they were solved, might have a really big impact on citizens, they might not actually necessarily have that support, um, even though the impact would be massive. So. Um, if you think of the data, for example, that um, maybe it'd be something that citizens aren't too interested in, but the impact it might have, that positive impact, they would be really supportive of that. So it was interesting looking at those from the different perspectives. So each of those challenges were scored across the perspective. And we were kind of looking for the sweet spot within each of those. So um, just to understand which of the challenges um, would be uh, best to move forward into our articulation. Uh, next slide, please. So what we heard, so we heard from our waste management team um, that there was limited knowledge of the patch across streets and parks and no real time view of spaces and the people who use them. This would include how the states of our streets, when and how spaces are used, and it causes tensions with citizens and inefficiencies on how we target resources. So this one's all about kind of the the, the physical stuff um, and, and, and how the streets look, how the services operate um, and how people are using them. So there's a behavioral element as well. Um, there was insufficient monitoring and recording, including manual and misuse processes for collections and dumping, leading to a waste of resource, poor service delivery and citizen dissatisfaction. So again, um, not understanding what's happening um, and not having that real time view of what's going on um, and then having to redo, redo collections or leading to that real dissatisfaction and, and um, conflict between uh, citizens and the council. The managing of environmental gain and service delivery expectations causes citizens, tensions with citizens across the spectrum of perspectives, leading to citizen dissatisfaction and a waste of resources in dealing with complaints and managing expectations. So in particular, a lot of this feedback came around no mo may. Um, and I've actually heard from people um, personally talking about things like this. So. Uh, obviously, we know that there's an environmental element to um, not mowing during the month of May. However, when citizens are used to services being delivered in a certain way, um, this might cause tension with them. So there's a real sort of uh, misunderstanding, lack of communication there. Um, and also that's set to grow. So as the environmental concerns become more pressing in, um, and more urgent to solve and also that the council do have commitments that they've made across a wide spectrum of different um, programs um, that they need to fulfill the, their obligations that this will just continue to increase um, so it's all that element of you know the planet is changing and we need to change in response but there's you know we all in an ideal world like to just carry on as we are um, we also heard there was limited internal systems to triage citizen and staff inquiries and provide information. So it led to inefficiencies in the way that they work, um, which then impacts service delivery, time misspent and citizen frustration. And I think we've all kind of felt this, like not knowing who to contact, both in your um, as a citizen and in somebody who might work in a large organisation. So knowing who that person is, who's who to speak to, who owns what, um, who's responsible for what. Um, and that's something I think that we can all relate to. So that was what we heard from waste management. Uh, next slide, please. And then from the housing team, we heard that there was a lack of data, poor data management for stock kit and equipment, leading to inconsistencies, non-compliance of assets, duplication of data and waste of resources, ultimately meaning that the needs of citizens um, weren't met. Um, this had an impact across health, safety and compliance, repairs, maintenance and decarbonisation um, and energy as well. We heard that training and knowledge uh, building opportunities are limited, so leading to a lack of understanding of, of funding opportunities, the legal obligations of the council, regulations and compliance, um, ultimately affecting um, the service delivery and opening up opportunities for litigation. So this was a really interesting one. So it came through that um, the opportunities to to 
get knowledge um, when you're a staff member at the council comes through experience and shadowing, but there isn't always time for that. Um, and that people need access to training and knowledge and, and ways of um, upskilling um, themselves to not only um, build their own satisfaction in their job, but just ensure that they're able to deliver the obligations of the council. So there's lots of legal and regulatory compliance um, elements that the council have. Um, and ensuring that those are, are met um, is really important. And this is both for internal teams and any subcontractors and contractors that are used. Um, we also heard that service delivery was challenging and there's limited visibility and services are not delivered in line, in line with those obligations and compliance or to the expected standard, um, causing again, citizen dissatisfaction, waste of time and resources and potential for litigation. So even from the simplest thing of knowing whether um, uh, when an, uh, a contractor might say that they've attempted to uh, fulfill uh, a job but the the, the tenant wasn't in um, through to um, just understanding whether the, the job was done well and going back and redoing it and sort of wasting time and resource and this then has an impact on energy usage so the energy usage was not optimal both in terms of housing stock but also the operation of the team so if you're having to go back in and redo things it might be two journeys instead of one um, it impacts citizens and their ability to heat and live um, in their homes and then also um, hinders BCC in meeting their decarbonisation requirements as well. So they have objectives that they need to meet um, around that. Uh, next slide, please. So from all of these challenges, you can see that we've gone through a process of refining and refining and refining. So within each cluster of themes, there was multiple um, strands and it was our job to help uh, help the participants co-create um, these briefs. So they fed everything that's gone into these briefs has come from them. It's fed through from all of those areas. And what we noticed was actually that the themes that came through were really similar um, across both of those directorates. So we're going out with challenge briefs that actually meet the needs of both waste, waste management and parks and the housing teams. So, so there's quite a nice golden thread that's come through as well. So the first um, of the challenge briefs is, addre is addressing the data collection and analysis, analysis to understand the environment. So I put this in layman's terms of this is a really understanding the stuff that they have, what the physical things, um, the ways that people work, um, that, that understanding all of that usage um, part of things which moves really nicely into there's a there's an element around data um, which is more to do with monitoring and recording performance and service delivery so how do you then use data to enhance those um, enhance the actual service delivery there's a challenge brief around knowledge sharing and training for service teams so really how you engage your teams to ensure that they're, they're delivering the best standard um, possible, but also from a retention of staff point of view, how do you build that satisfaction, people that feel like they're doing a job well done um, and can get that satisfaction. And that could be across um, contractors and internal teams as well. Um, so it's, it's all about really understanding how to work with um, those teams to ensure that they have the skills that are needed to utilize all of that great data and all of that um, great information that's coming through and that knowledge and, and really create an environment where knowledge sharing is at the heart of what everybody does. And then, then lastly, our challenge brief is around engaging with citizens um, and having effective methods of communication. So it's so great doing all of these things. You've got the data, you know what you've got, you know how to use data to improve performance. You've got um, teams that might be trained really well, but then how do you communicate that to the citizens um, and essentially um, build a positive interaction with citizens as well? And I believe, do I have another slide? That's your last slide, Vita. My last one. Um, so it was a really interesting um, exercise for us. Um, there were things that we expected, as I said, things that we weren't expecting um, that came through. <clears throat> um, and it offered a really great opportunity to understand what those common themes were. So these briefs have an opportunity, we believe, beyond those directorates as well. So if you think about the services that council delivers that you've got from the housing to, to waste management, they're so intrinsically linked. But then there's an impact on adult social care. There'll be a public health impact as well. So 
if through this process people are able to have access to healthier homes, there'll be less of an impact on their, perhaps on adult social care. There'll be perhaps less of an impact on other services that are required um, that kind of are um, symptoms of these root causes. So when through this process, it's really interesting to think about what we might think is a problem is actually a symptom of a, of a deeper problem. And what we do as steam houses try to get down to the sort of root cause of those problems and filter through um, filter through those different uh, challenges that are faced and identify what might be solved because it's um, a symptom of the problem and what might be solved, uh, what might actually be the thing that we need to get to the grips of. So we think that these four challenge briefs really offer a really rounded view on, on how to improve public service delivery um, across those areas. I think happy to hand over. Thank you, Vita. I appreciate that. Um, next slide, please. So um, now's an opportunity to start thinking about any questions, uh, anything that Vita said, anything that you might want to probe or, or want further information on, feel free to start putting them through the chat function and we'll have a uh, panel discussion afterwards on any of the points raised so far. So please get some questions in. So now we're going to cover the program application itself. I'm going to go into a little bit of detail about the application. Next slide, please. Right, how to apply. So the key date to keep in mind when applying is obviously the application deadline, which is the midnight of the 10th of September. Following on, there will be a list of SMEs that will be shortlisted who will then be invited for interviews. The interview process is broken into two parts. The first interview will be focused on your solution and it will be examined by a panel of technical experts. Following which, if you're success successful at that stage, you will then be invited for a second interview where we will assess the, assess the commercial potential of your solution. So you've got the technical uh, selection first and then the commercial selection. Interviews will be taking place between the 20th of September to the 26th of September. And we will be confirming the cohort that will be going forward on the 28th of, 28th of September. And we've got a scheduled date for the 24th of October, which is going to be the program welcome date. So keep that date in your diary, which is the 24th of October. So regarding the eligibility criteria, uh, the key ones that you need to keep in mind are the ones listed there that essentially you will need to be a UK company. So you, you must have a UK registered business. Um, your innovation technology solution will preferably be TRL 5 or above. And you can find out further details about uh, the technology readiness levels within the application page. So whenever you... Um, you visit the diatomic web page you'll have a link to all the upcoming events for example we've got an in-person webinar next week as well and you've got the application guidance and the application form so certainly i recommend that you download the application guidance document it has a lot of useful information contained within it so that's a recommended reading please do read that you will certainly need to show a demonstrable alignment to one of the challenges being addressed so the ones that vita just went through and uh, they were uh, Fantastic discussions, actually, things that normally as a layperson you wouldn't consider that a council has to think about and many of the challenges that they have. So certainly have a look at the challenges and, you know, the, the solutions could be anything. You know, I, I don't want you to be kind of focused on oh, just that one solution. It has to be this is what the council is looking for. Keep it open, actually. And you never know where that might lead to. And it is preferable. Um, that your business and i've had a few questions uh, on this already that your business is based in the west midlands so i mean this is a west midlands based program if you're based in the west midlands fantastic on top of that you may not be based in the west midlands but you might be wanting to increase operations in the region and that works equally well for us we will be holding face-to-face -face meetings uh, in the west midlands over the months so you will need to be willing to complete a demonstration of your solution in the relevant environment which will be in the West Midlands. Uh, I, I want to go into that in further detail because um, I'm not, I'll have uh, questions on that. So it'd be great if applicants already have an operational presence within the West Midlands or registered office, office in the region. In any case, you could also have a desire to be wanting to increase your operation in the region or that you can expect some 
level of regional impact from the deployment of your solution, whether that's future jobs or investment opportunities. If, for example, you have an applicant who is based outside the region and they have no intention of creating any ongoing presence within the region, then sadly they will not meet the eligibility criteria. So that's something to keep in mind when completing your application. Next slide, please. Right, so now we're going to be talking about the application and we're going to be going through it to do an application demonstration to give you an idea of exactly how the application interface works and provide some familiarity with the platform. So my colleague Jericho will be leading this and I'm just checking if Jericho has joined us. She hasn't joined us as of yet. She's going to be joining us in the next couple of minutes. So I can take this opportunity whilst we wait for Jericho to answer a couple of questions. So the first one from Adam is, hello Ravi, would you be distributing the slide deck shown today? Yes, we will. We'll be sending that out um, to all the attendees. So you'll have that information. And you've had a, a comment from him, which is greetings. We have completed the application, but I've not heard anything back in regards to the next steps. Is there a guidance on what the next steps are, please? Uh, thank you very much for that question, Hem. I'll check to see the progress of your application and make sure that it's gone through, that there's not been any issues, and I can issue some, you some further information in terms of what the next steps are. Uh, Ravi, can I just um, add to that one? We, sure. we haven't actually had any applications submitted. We've got a few in progress, but none submitted at the moment. So I think um, just, just make sure when you... Um, it might be that you've registered your details or you've gone, you've saved, but you haven't actually clicked submit. If you are having a technical issue with actually clicking submit or please let us know, we can we can try and fix anything if there are any technical issues, but we haven't actually received any submitted applications as of yet. Fantastic, Venetia. And also uh, to add to that as well, keep within the word limits. So I think that's pretty important. Uh, there is a word limit and make sure that you don't um, exceed that as well. Question from Becky um, is, will the selection interviews be online or in person? Benicia, would you like to answer that one? Yeah, the um, selection interviews will be online. Fantastic. So Jericho's due to join us soon and we can move her process to uh, after the Q&A, if that helps, because um, she hasn't uh, joined us as of yet. Um, next slide, please. I can uh, come back to Jericho when, when she joins us. Um, I think there was one before that. It was the scoring criteria, the one slide before that, please. That's it. So I'm just going to cover the scoring criteria. So this is a quick slide and it highlights how applications will be sc scored. So essentially, they will be reviewed by at least three expert assessors from the Connected Places Catapult and our partner organisation, Birmingham City Council. All assessors will have a broad technical knowledge across different backgrounds, and they will mark your application accordingly. With that in mind, do please try to write clearly in your application using layman's terms and avoid any acronyms or obscure jargon. It makes it easier for us to read and keep it consistent with the scoring. Essentially, keep it simple as possible, and we will be scoring applications based around the four criteria of solution market, traction and financials, the team, and program fit. So when you download the application guidance document, that goes into these four criteria in detail, and it expands on what we mean by these. And it's, it's pretty straightforward, actually. So uh, do download the application guidance. Those who are invited to interview will also be provided with some interview guidance um, once you reach that stage. So what I'd like to do, next slide, please. Um, and my colleague is a bit late with the demonstration of how to use the application, but we'll move that towards the end of the webinar. So now we have the live questions and answers session. So I'd like to bring my colleagues, Chris, Venetia and Vita, if you like, onto the panel and uh, I'll direct some of the questions to you all. <clears throat> so we're fortunate to have Venetia Holtz, who's the Accelerator Programme T Lead for the Connected Places Catapult. And we have Chris Holmes, who's from the digital team at Birmingham City Council. Welcome to you both. I'll just have a look at the questions in the webinar chat before I move to the actual Q&A. So first one is, what are the typical criteria for commercial selection from Phil? Um, I think we've just covered that. Uh, Venetia, is there anything you'd like to add to that? 
So when we go into, so the, we've just shared the scoring criteria for the for the applications, and there's more um, information on that and what constitutes um, a, a good answer, a, a sort of um, the criteria that we're looking for in each of the sections. Um, the, when it comes to the commercial interviews, that we'll share some further guidance for those that are, are shortlisted. So we'll give you some pointers as to what we'd want to see in the technical um, interviews and also in the commercial interviews as well. But yeah, please refer to the application guidance for um, for what we're looking to see in the application questions. Fantastic. Perfect. And the next question is from Mohammed Nazir, which is, what is the level of financial support? You have not provided this information. And Mohammed is developing complex AI and data technologies is costly. Hence, it will be helpful to know the level of funding support available. Venetia, can I ask you to respond to that one, please? Yes, so um, we, ha we have got it up on the opportunity page and on the application as well. There's a total pot of 500,000 for this program. And what um, we're, we're envisaging is that five um, SMEs will be taken forward to full trials that will take place between January um, and the very beginning of April next year. And then we'll have up, uh, up, to, up to 12 total, so potentially seven SMEs who will be doing lighter testing. So that could constitute a few weeks uh, or a few days, a chance to um, trial something and demonstrate something, but, but, but not the full testing. So we're, we're looking, um, we know that every SME has different um, costs involved. So we are um, looking to see what type, what, what length of testing you would like to propose for your solution. Then it will also be assessed by the program solution fit. So looking at uh, working with the council and seeing which uh, solutions have, um, have the most benefit and where we think we can support the, for the, the longer term trialing as opposed to the shorter demonstrators. So we're going to be taking into account your trial plans, but also your program solution fit. And yeah, go, go back to the money. As I said, it's a total pot. So um, we're not expecting to, um, to divide that pot equally, because as I said, we're going to look at um, up to five SMEs doing the full testing, and then the others would be doing a lighter testing, and that we, we would expect the cost to reflect that as well. Thank you, Venetia. Um, another second question I'm going to move to is, what is the definition of an SME? Is there a turnover threshold, for example, of size or teams to be eligible? Uh, I'll open that to any of the panel who want to answer that. Uh, yeah, as, as part of that, uh, the um, uh, the application questions, there should be um, a, a link to to the definition of um, an SME, but we can we can share that so that it's it's clear with everyone. So if it's if it's not up on the application questions, it, it should be. But if it's not, um, we can we can share that. Thank you. A lot. Some of the questions coming through are generally about the application, so we'll go through these quickly, and then I'll I'll give Chris the opportunity to provide provide any additional feedback he'd like to as well. So, Venetia, another one for you is: Are the eligible costs included in the application guidelines? It sounds like all development costs are out of scope and trial setup. Running this analysis is the main anticipated costs. Sorry, where is sort of, I'm sort of, sort of working at that? Can you repeat the question? I'll read that. I'll read that one again. Are the eligible costs included in the application guidelines? Um, yeah. So yeah. So we've got quite a lot of detail on um, on what should be included. So there's if if you find that um, you need further support, please do get in touch. But we have got. Um, uh, a table for project finances as part of the application. We've also um, got some some of the criteria, uh, the different um, aspects that we, we would uh, expect to be included, including um, sort of staff time, um, any contractors that you would be using as well. Um, but if you find that there's still a question unanswered from what we've got, please yeah, please do get in touch and we can we can answer that question. Fantastic. And I'll also encourage any of the attendees to think about any questions around the challenges, please, um, if you've got any specific questions to Birmingham City Council as well. So I'll just go through a couple of more questions. We've got one from Peter Kage who says, we are currently based in Northern Ireland and already partnered with Warwick Manufacturing Group and hope to move to GB 
would we be eligible for this challenge? Um, uh, Venetia, I'll, I'll hand that one to you, uh, if you'll like to answer that, please. So we are currently based and, and already partner with to move to Britain. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm guessing it means you're already a UK registered company. So the, yeah, so, so what we're looking for is you have to be a UK registered company when you apply. You, um, we are, um, we, um, as, as we've said on the, we, on the, um, on all the guidance, we're looking for SMEs who either are already in the West Midlands or, or who want, who have, um, serious, um, intentions of, um, expanding operations in the West Midlands. Um, we'd be on this program as well. So that, that would be eligible as long as, as you meet that criteria about the, the UK registered company. Fantastic. Uh, one for Chris here, it's from Jacob Tong. It says, good morning. Would you be able to provide any further information on any ambitions to supporting development or evolution of strategies at the departmental level for the challenge briefs? Um, okay, so yeah, I'm not quite sure what the question's getting at, but um, I guess in terms of what, what we're looking for, um, just perhaps just sort of backtrack slightly. So Vita's described quite eloquently some of the issues and challenges that we have in terms of operation across the, the council. Um, so we are looking for products, so digital products probably, uh, which are able to deal with either sort of single challenges or ideally multiple challenges as well. Um, so across, and, and I guess there's sort of examples of you know, fixing or helping in either housing or maybe sort of moving across into adult social care because it's looking at how we monitor the assets, but also the people that use the assets in that case, so the properties. Um, so if that, I'm not sure if that fully answers the question. No, I, I think it's some new sort of feedback there as well. We've got another one for you, Chris, here, which, which is from Jake Lager. Uh, scan the sun you're saying what's the most pressing issue in Birmingham regarding energy and essentially an extension to that is energy challenge what are you looking for mm -hmm. well I guess with the uh, decarbonisation uh, the use of energy is quite a big uh, issue for us as a city uh, and with those uh, with those sort of service areas, so within housing, for example, there's quite a big retrofit program going on, which is really aimed at improving the standard of the housing, but also improving insulation and various other aspects so to help reduce energy usage. So we, we may be, so there's opportunities there looking at how energy is used, monitoring the Again, assets, how they're used, whether we can influence people's behaviour, uh, and again, what uh, what energy is actually required to uh, to operate either a service or or you know if you're a resident to operate a within a within a, a house, let's say. Thank you for that, Chris. So, a question from Jean, which is: Can we be a startup, or do we need to be operating for a specific number of years? Venetia, would you like to answer that? Yeah, so you, you can you can definitely be um, um, a startup. We've said um, we've got so I think a few questions about tier R levels. Not everyone uses them. Technology readiness levels on the application. You'll see what um, and you can do a search online as well. What the what the different uh, technology readiness levels mean. Um, we're not ex we are expecting there will be more mature solutions. Um, uh, coming through, but also that there might be room to have slightly earlier stage um, uh, solutions as well, where we can where we can trial um, so something that is is a bit more innovative. Um, so we are we are looking at quite a range range of solutions here. So we're yeah, if, as long as you um, we're saying preferably TRL five to eight, but um, as as long as it's over four, I think we can uh, we, we can definitely take into account your application as well. Yeah, can I can I add something to that, Ravi? Please um, do. So, so I guess yeah. So what uh, Venetia is saying is absolutely spot on. So we we are very interested. So as a council, we're interested in 
products which are you know, very close to being market ready uh, and the trialing could be part of that assessment and business case justification if you like so looking at how products work in the uh, in the environment that they're aimed at but we could also be very interested looking at what the answer the possible is so we might be exploring new things new capabilities maybe bringing some you know sensing capability across uh, a number of different areas together to just to sort of show what is possible with a view then to perhaps you know taking that forward uh, again beyond you know within this program but maybe even beyond that as well fantastic another uh, couple of questions uh, one from becky lane again in the application is it helpful to show initial feedback and engagement from the relevant birmingham city council team for our scope uh, i can respond to that which is yes yes of course becky if you've already made contact and have had communication across the region with relevant authorities Birmingham City Council or others and please do include that in your application form because it gives insight into what your solution is and some of the preparatory work that you've done around that so um, please do include any scoping work that you've been doing and uh, that would be quite uh, advantageous to you know, your um, application which will then be screened. Is there a preferred or maximum budget requirement per application and that's from Vlad? Um, Venetia, would you like to answer that? I, th I think we've already answered that one. So we've said total part and different levels of of trialing. So please put forward what uh, you, what what you think would be most useful um, for your solution and where you could prove the most value. And we will take that into account, as I said, through the application, through the interview process, and also by assessing your program fit with um, with the different council departments. So. Um, We've yeah we've we've uh, we don't envisage that everyone will have the same costs involved. So we're not we're not prescribing um, specific amounts per SME. We're looking at a total pot and and would like you to put forward a, the case for how long you would like to test for and and the and the real costs um, involved in that. So this is yeah this is about testing the solution and um, and and being compensated for for those for that testing but also it's not a, a profit exercise either thank you i'm going to take a couple of more questions before i hand over to my colleague jericho who can then showcase the application process before we then come back to the final sets of questions so if you haven't asked one please do uh, get them into the q a section especially if there's any for the challenges so there's one here from uh, Bender, which is, will there be a link to a recording of this meeting shared later? Yes, it's going to be on YouTube and this link will be sent out to you. So you will receive that. Um, a good one here, which is, will businesses still own the IP and rights of commercialization for their solutions? Uh, Venetia, would you like to answer that? Yes. Yeah, so um, we've got up on the on the application uh on the application page, there's there's two links. So we've got the terms and conditions, which covers um, NDA and program participation. And then we have the pilot agreement. So we're looking at a pre-commercial agreement for the for the trialing phase, and that's how the money will be uh, disseminated. So this is not a grant, but pre-commercial um, agreement. So um, uh, please refer to that for the IP. So the IP will remain with the SME, but it's usually on a... Um, uh, that there, there, there is more detail added onto that um, uh, agreement about um, about how how that's covered in, un, under that pre-commercial agreement. So I'd, I'd refer to that um, for, for the detail. Thank you, and I'll take the next question before we go to Jericho, which is again from Becky Lane. A good question, which is, what is the follow-on commitment from the trialing from Birmingham City Council and CPC? Chris, would you like to answer that? And then uh, Venetia after uh, Chris, please. Um, so, well, I, I guess within the trialing, what we're looking for is, uh, is, is seeing how the products work. Uh, so evidence of that. But, um, but during that period, we were also very interested in working with the applicants on the business case. So that's looking at uh, at what the what the product does, what the cha what challenges the product is solving from from the operational point of view. So bear in mind we're looking for operational efficiency or citizen improvement experience or service uh, service team improvement uh, as well. 
So kind of working on the business case, uh, looking at those operational challenges and how they're solved, what the return on investment might be. So it depends on what those outcomes look like. So if we've got a very compelling business case at the end of that, that's where we'd be looking for uh, working together uh, beyond the accelerator. Um, I guess we're also looking to to try and set up uh, some live operational environments while we're while we're doing this. So you know properties which have access uh, for new products for testing, uh, and the same perhaps with uh, with waste management. You might need access to vehicles, or you might need access to service teams, or you might need access to the data which is already being collected. So. So there's opportunity for accessing uh, our data and our, our assets um, even beyond the, uh, the the accelerator period, uh, and that's what we're we're looking for. But but it's really critical that that we're we're going to be working with you during these uh, these trialing periods. So it depends on the on the success of that uh, and what you're able to show. Thank you, Venetia. You want to add anything to that? Uh, no, I was just going to try and get through some of the other questions. Um, so could we apply just to do the lighter testing? Um, yeah, I think I've already covered that. But yes, absolutely. If you would only like to do lighter testing um, or lighter demonstrators, please do apply for that. Um, so, yeah, that's absolutely possible. Um, and um, for anyone is um, having any difficulties with the Skipso application, we will um, follow up with you and give you any support. Please do get in contact with us um, if you are having any issues. Are consortiums eligible, eligible to apply? Yes, that's covered in the guidance that consortiums are eligible to apply. We we have we ask for one lead partner um, to be the, 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 the lead applicant who will receive the money for the trials, um, but it's possible to uh, subcontract out some of the work for the for the testing um and we have yeah we have had that's quite common in our programs to have um, um consortium apply so that is that is very much possible as long as uh, we have a lead applicant who will who will be doing the application but please mention the other organizations if you have them in mind um thank you venetia okay we'll take this opportunity to go to jericho who's joined us now so jericho was going to go through and do an application demonstration to give a, an idea of exactly how the application interface works and pro provide some familiarity with the platform. So uh, Jericho, over to you. Perfect. Um, thank you, everyone. Um, I'm going to begin sharing screen. Um, okay, can everyone see my screen? I think that should be fine. Um, okay, awesome. So everyone, this is the um, CPC community platform, um, and this is where you'll be submitting your application. So the first step I want to um, tell you guys to do is to sign up. Um, you don't have to be signed up to view the um, the landing page that has all the information um, on Diatomic, but um, you will need to be signed up to apply. So we do recommend that you just sign up at the beginning. But um, so here I've you know I've gone from the home page. I'll go um, to programs and then go to Diatomic UK Accelerator, and here you can view um, any of the key information, any of the key dates, um, some of the program specs that have been discussed here, more information um, on all the challenges, um, eligibility criteria, um, any key documents, um, and contacts and partner information. Um, so from here, um, I can either sign up via here or up here. So I'll need to create an account first. And this will just collect information such as my name, my email address. Um, I'll need to create a password, confirm the password, um, consent to be contacted. Have most people do SME. Um, I can attach a profile picture if I choose, but it's not required. Same with uh, LinkedIn. Um, I can indicate my company name and my job title. I can also put a bio if I wish, but it's not required. Um, and then this part's quite important. So I'm just going to select that I'd like to up to the Diatomic UK Accelerator. So that way, once I do create my account successfully, it'll show up on my user dashboard. Um, yeah, and then um, this, this information is voluntary. I'll just accept the TNCs and I will submit my account. I'm just going to log on to my actual account in the interest of time. It loads.
So this is my admin dashboard. So it's going to look a little bit different from you guys, but I'm just going to follow the same steps. I'm going to go to Diatomic UK Accelerator. Um, and as you can see, now that I'm logged in, it says apply now. So I'll view the application guidance before I do my application. But let's say I've already done that. I'm going to hit apply now um, and my form will pop up. So the key things to remember about the form are that um, because it's broken down into multiple sections, if I've not completed any required questions in the first section, I won't be able to move forward to the second section. Um, it'll also save my progress as I go along. So we always recommend that once you've made some progress on your application, if you're not ready to submit it, that you save to draft. But the system will automatically save your work um, every couple of seconds. So that's important to note. Um, so yeah, you'll just begin filling out the information. Um, you can either submit it once you're complete or you can save a draft. If I do save a draft, um, I'll have to input some information for it to do that correctly. Say this one. So it'll give me a success message. So you wanna make sure that you see that. And then a key thing to note is that if I go to my user dashboard, I'm going to move this. If I go to my activity, I should be able to see anything that I have um, in progress. So you can access your safe drafts there um, and continue to work on them. I know some people also like to work on a Word document and copy and paste. It's really up to you um, and what you guys think would be the best process, but that's the main flow. Um, another key thing to remember is that once you do submit your application, you'll get another one of those pop-up messages on the screen. And you should also receive um, an email that says, you know, the name of your application, a link, something like that, a success message to the email address that you registered with. So if you don't receive that, then definitely contact um, Venetia, Ravi, or myself, um, and we can definitely sort that out for you and confirm if your application went through. If not, it should be in safe drafts. So. Yeah, that's my bet. Thank you very much, Jericho. Very much appreciated. So we'll go back to the final Q&A session. There's a few more questions we've got here and we'll quickly go through them and I'll, I'll allocate them again. So one from Nikki Gaddo, how do we assess our technology ready levels? We are about to launch our MVP. So I would guess we would be TLL4. How long do you have to operate in a live environment to be considered TRL5? Venetia, would you like to answer that? Yeah, so on the um, application, we've got that drop down, which gives a bit more of a uh, description of all the different levels. But I think um, we will be accepting four and five. Um, but it, I think it's it's more of your interpretation of the solution of where you think you're at. So, you know, sometimes um, sometimes sometimes we do get applications through where we, we don't quite agree with the TRL level, but we can um but please put any like supporting evidence in your um, application. So what what you have been able to achieve so far, where you are having, uh, where you have been able to do any testing or had any traction that will all um, um, support your application and um, show interest in your solution. So that would be that would be uh, recommended. But if you have any um, follow up questions or you're not sure of anything, please do get into co in contact. We can always. Um, uh, give, provide some more information or answer any questions. And as Ravi mentioned, um, it's an event next week in Birmingham um, for anyone who is available to join that as well. Thank you, Venetia. Peter, a question from Peter Foley, which is, can the four month trial plan include software development activities? Chris, your thoughts on that? Um, so I, th I think so, because this is about product development. So it's about trialing, but it's also about developing the product at the same time. So I think so, but I will defer to Venetia to answer that more definitively. Yeah, so I think it would, it, it, there is scope within the remit of the trial. So if, if it's going to um, be directly relevant to what you're looking to test and how that fits with solving the council's challenges, then, then I agree with Chris. I think um, there is remit to do that. Um, general product development costs, there, there, we don't have um, funding for that in general. It has to have that application to, to solving the challenge. So please, um, if you have got costs involved with that, please put it in, within the setting of 
trialing and the testing um, rather than general just general product development but we will be offering as Ravi's mentioned general business support so before we get into the trial stage of the program we will be offering uh, business and commercial support um, we have got a lot of expertise within the catapult about helping with uh, with working with users and identifying um, uh, go-to-market strategy pricing models um, various different elements that will help with your business um, and we'll also be supporting with firming up the trial proposal so while we ask for a trial proposal in a trial plan in the application we will also be be working with those who are selected um, from October onwards on, on making sure that trial proposal is 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 fit for purpose when it comes to working with the council and um, so yeah we'll be working all together it'll be a very collaborative process um, but yeah please think of any development in terms of what you'll be testing and how that solves those challenges Thank you. We've also got a follow up question from Jacob to Chris, which is thank you, Chris, for your response. The challenge brief seems very much geared towards operational improvements at the coal face. Will you be looking for solutions which look performance, look at performance at the city or neighborhood level or just at the asset level? Uh, so, it is, so it is both. So it's looking at uh, assets. I guess an example of that might be the waste management. Uh, so if you think around waste management team and what they do, so they're looking at the street cleansing, bin collection, uh, and various other things around that. So, it's it's the kind of it's the service operation, which is the vehicles and the people that are providing that service. But it is very much at a city level as well. So, you know, there may be certain parts of the city that are more challenging than others, perhaps for for that kind of operation. So, we are we do want to see that uh, that consideration. Uh, across the, the city. Thank you, Chris. One from Bender, which is, do you have any resources with experience of the process that might be available to assist writing and reviewing the application? I think I have the answer to that, but I'll go to Venetia just to confirm. So the question is about whether you, we have guidance on the, on the application questions. Uh, I think so. When resources, I might, if I suspected it could be financial, but uh, we can answer both of them. Financial, I don't think there's any financial resources to help with writing the application, but we've obviously got the guidance um, application form, haven't we? Yeah, so um, when it comes to writing the application, I would say that we've in included some maximum word limits, but um, I'm happy to review um, concise, I'd, I'd rather answers be concise and, and strong. So, so please don't feel the need to write extensively um, on that side of things. We have got given application guidance on, on the kinds of things we're looking for in each of the different questions and what some of the strong uh, the strong scoring criteria would look like, um, which would take in, uh, into account the, the trial, it would take into account the presence in the West Midlands, it would take into account any traction um, that you've had, the team, all of these things. This is all, there's a lot of information on the, on the guidance. Um, so I really would recommend having a look at that. Um, and please do not feel the need to write a lot. Um, I think it's better just to make sure the, that you that you put the all the key information in, but don't feel that um, length equals strength, because I, I don't think it does. I think Ben does come back to confirm that he, he was referring, they were referring to human resources. So I don't think there's any actual support to help uh, applicants fill in the application, is there? No, no we don't. We can, if, if you have any specific questions, feel free to um, put them to us. But um, no, we, we, we don't have anyone who can help um, do, the, do the application. Right, that's it. We're at the final 10 questions. We've had a big question from Becky. So I'm going to read this out and... Uh, so you've got it in the recording as well. Are we at risk of providing insight for a business case to then go to a full procurement and potentially be frozen out of future procurement processes due to a conflict? Um, that's a quite, quite a heavy question there. V Venetia, any thoughts on that? Um, so so is, this, is this to do with if you put forward the business case and then you're having separate conversations with other mem other departments in the council or what yes. um could, could i perhaps yeah. provide, 
try. I think Chris is probably better for that one. Yeah, can I can I try and try and provide at least the first uh, the first level of the answer? So, I guess uh, working in a sort of trial environment like this, there's uh, there's benefits for both the SME and for the you know the the ultimate beneficiary, which could be the council in this case. Um, so the the advantage to the SME is to be able to trial uh, a product in a live environment is working on a business case and and being able to discuss that uh with a with a customer um procurement is uh, is always a bit of a thorny issue because it's done certainly in in public uh in a public environment it's always done in an open way so yes there there is a a risk that uh that you develop something which is then that that challenge is then put out to uh, to a public environment. But what it does mean, though, is that you would be in really good position because you know what's being looked for, you've tested and can demonstrate the return on investment. So I would say uh, that the benefit uh, definitely outweighs the, the risk, but ultimately that's up to the SMEs to decide. Thank you for that feedback, Chris. Another one for you, actually, from Vlad, which is, can community energy groups on Birmingham be a part of the project consortia together with an SME? Uh, well, perhaps I can I just defer to Venetia, actually, just to answer the question around uh, consortia, because I saw that came up a couple of times. Oh, we've already answered the question on consortia. Was there something else come through? Um, I think it was a variant on that. So we, we, we've, we've answered that one. Um, we can move on to the next one. Mm -hmm. are micro businesses eligible to apply um yeah so I've, I've added a link and i think it's gone out to everyone about um uh about what uh the different the different definitions so um um but yeah can I, if everyone could have a look at that that would probably be helpful fantastic and there's a final few questions there Will the businesses receive any grants or financial support to develop their solutions? If yes, how much will it be? Or is it prof only professional support or services? So I think we've mentioned this already. These are going to be paid trials. So there is a pot of up to £500,000. So we're looking at taking forward five SMEs for full trials and the rest remaining will be lighter trials as well. So there is financial support there looking at to developing the solutions. Uh, and it's all in the application guidance. So please have a look at the application guidance on that. Um, John also asked a similar question. Is there any financial support for the initial test bed phase? Um, there is a pot of 500k as, as mentioned. Um, yeah, so I, I think that is for the for the initial phase where we're, where we're working on the trial plans and um, we have we have not got um, uh, we have we have not got funding available for that. So there'll be when when the program starts in October, they'll be working together with the project teams on finalizing what the trial will look like and the testing will start in January and, the, and there's a payment um, schedule um, in the application guidance where we, uh, I think it's about 30% um, as at the beginning of the trial phase, that would be in January. So no payment for the October um, to December, um, that would be business support business support and trial scoping. Having looked at the guidance, it's 30% payment in January and it's 30% at the end of February and you have the remaining 40% in April. So that's the breakdown on the schedules. Good question from Jacob Tong here, which is, is there any further information available on the current digitalization level of systems, TRL, digital applications currently being used by the various departments to deliver the services covered by the challenge briefs? Chris? Yeah, so that, that is a good question. Um, so I guess it's it's complicated. So it's probably better if I could just ask. So if anybody's got a solution in mind to come and talk to us um, about what that solution is and how that sort of aligns with anything that's uh, that's already uh, in place. I guess just in terms of asset monitoring, there isn't much in place, and that's the reason for this call and, and competition. So, you know, our knowledge uh, of our housing stock, for example, um, around, you know, any sort of automated way of getting information around the housing stock, we, we don't have much information, and that's true of 
all housing associations. It's not just Birmingham City Council. That's that's a general trend. Um, and that's something that the government is pushing rightly to uh, to try and help us all to uh, to understand the state of the residences that we're providing. So if the, so, there is a, a reasonably uh, wide open opportunity here. So any any products and services around that, um, you know, we, we're we're happy to discuss the sort of things that we're considering. We'd love to talk to you. Um, so we can do that either through the um, the face to face meeting next week, or we can also arrange to talk to you separately uh, if that helps. Certainly, and I, and I would recommend um, colleagues on the webinar today sign up for the uh, the in person event at Steam House in Birmingham next week, where you can meet us in in person and we can uh, answer any questions that you might have one to one um, as well. I'm just going to get go on to do a few more of the questions because I can see that them coming through. So apologies for for misunderstanding the question earlier. Micro businesses are eligible to uh, apply, so uh, please do as long as you meet the other eligibility criteria. Uh, micro businesses are welcome. Um, does the solution have to cover all fa four facets of the data training, engagement, knowledge sharing? No. So we have said if you can solve multiple challenges, that would be beneficial, but you by all means do not need to cover everything. Um, within the different challenges, there are also different, um, different pain points. So it may be that um, that you focus in on, on one more than the others. Where there is more general application and you think you can solve more problems, that's wonderful, but it's also possible to apply um, as long as you um, have some fit with some of the challenge areas. So yeah, please please do apply. Um, when you firm up the trial proposal, would, would there be any adjustments to the budget? So I, I think, uh, the how the uh, trial um training will work will 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 need to be um a, a bit flexible we we do understand that um uh, we are, you don't have the full information now that you will have once you start working with the the different council departments um but what we're trying to ascertain now is um uh is is the general the general costs and the general length of testing that you would like to put forward. And as I said, we will then have to go away and look at your application. Um, and for those who are successful, those uh, the interviews and the program solution fit um, with the council to see who who would most likely go forward. But I do appreciate there will uh, we won't have all the answers now, so there will need to be some flexibility. Um, uh, but that will probably need to be at, within the project team's discretion of um, if if you've put forward a trial proposal and it comes down to it that it doesn't quite cover all your costs, then we we can either see if there's additional budget to support or scale back the trial slightly to to accommodate that. So there will there will probably need to be some flexibility once we have full information on both sides. Can we see the full application questions anywhere? So yeah, if you re register on the on the application uh, uh, page, you will be able to um, see see all the questions um, um, by by logging on. So I recommend uh, you do that sooner rather than later, so you can see the types of questions that there are some in the app. Some examples of the things we're asking in the application guidance, but it's it's probably best to go onto the application and start it as soon as possible. I know. Um, it's a tendency in every in everything that we do that we um, and you're all very busy to to submit um, towards the the deadline. But if you can start work on this now and you come up with any questions, then we can help um, respond to those questions if if you have any, or you can refer back to the guidance. But um, if if you leave it to the last minute, it, it does limit our, our ability to to help you if you are struggling with anything on the application. Um, um, sorry, no, no, another, another one is um, by the end of the program, we're looking to have a prototype in place or it has, does it have to be a fully functional product by the end of the six months? So I think going back to what we discussed earlier, we, we are expecting there to be a bit of a range where we do, um, where we trial some solutions which are pretty tried and tested and um, have already got a lot of traction uh, in place, but there will be some earlier stage um, solutions as well, where we will see 
what could be possible and and take take a, a new look at things. But I think while there is, uh, as we've mentioned, the um, the potential to do some development together, I think we when it comes to the solution, there has to be something in place to to be able to trial um, and test. So um, even if it's not uh, been fully rolled out, we would I, I don't think it can uh, we, we would need something that was able to test and to assess the application now. So even if it's not fully fledged, then we to, to take into account the uh, the application, there needs to be um, some level of technological assessment to be made. So I, it depends ex exactly where you're at with sort of an MVP or a prototype. So I think we would want it uh, to be fairly functional before the program starts, even if there is a little bit of work to do. Thank you for that, Venetia. A couple of final questions, uh, guys. Uh, one is for Chris, which is, are there housing management and repairs management applications in place currently? So within housing, very specifically housing and repairs, the, the systems that we've got in, in place is more around uh, a kind of repair and maintenance scheduling um, tools. So it's around the sort of management of knowing what needs to be done and, and uh, assigning work to teams to, to make it happen. I guess what we're talking about here is a little different in we're, we're talking about how do we monitor and maintain our assets kind of automatically? Um, so, and, and also sort of challenging the things that take time to do. So just to give you an example, so within housing, we, we, we have an obligation, uh, regulatory obligation compliance around big six, which is gas, electric, asbestos, fire, water, et cetera. So, and it's it's a very manual process. So it's about people going to inspect those, uh, those things within properties. So we, we want also to be challenging the status quo. So, you know, do, do we need to have manual inspections? Can, can digital replace some of those things? It may not be possible to replace all of them, but it may be possible to replace some and also waiting until the, the yearly or, or every other year inspection may not show up things that we need to pay attention to. So thinking around, you know, very specifically things like lifts and sprinklers and, and those kind of things, do we, do we know what, this, what the state of those are in? Uh, can we see any degradation of, uh, of any of those systems so we can then start to take action so we, so we know when uh, when something is going to need maintenance. Thinking around the maintenance schedule, do we know what the state of our communal areas is? Uh, you know, do we do we know uh, heating, damp and mould is, uh, is a very big topic. Uh, do we know that the jobs have been finished properly? It's, the, it's those kind of things that we're, that we're starting to question uh, with a view to can we then operate more, more effectively and efficiently. And by the way, if we're doing that, all of those things uh, across housing, can some of those technologies help us with uh, with the people who are living there, which is what we mentioned earlier. So if you if you know what state your asset is in, so the uh, the building, can we also use those technologies to help us to better, uh, better help some of the residents? So bear in mind, in Birmingham, so the council owns 60,000 properties and there are 120,000 properties which are uh, run by housing associations. So there's, a, there's a big stock of housing. There's, uh, there's nearly half a million properties uh, within the Birmingham region. Uh, so, the, so, the, so the rest are private properties. So it's thinking about those assets the fifth the 500,000 then brings us into waste management where you know each one of those properties has got bins associated so do we know what the status of the bins are do we know that they're out ready for collection um which helps us with any kind of miss miss bins um or maybe there's health and safety and compliance issues with waste management as well we're also thinking around the environment uh, in that particular case. So um, littering, fly tipping, roadblocks, 
those kind of things are all important to to service teams. Um, and then lastly, just to give you the uh, uh, the view around parks, so we've got over 500 open green spaces within within Birmingham, all which require maintenance. So, what Vita mentioned earlier around, do we know how those uh, green spaces are being used? Um, which then results in either you know maintenance requirements, uh, litter collection, and those, those kind of things. So which could also extend, by the way, to life-saving equipment, uh, or it could be access equipment. So how can we help uh, people who require assistance uh, access some of those uh, green spaces better? So do we need more benches? Do we need access ramps? All those kind of things. If we know how those spaces are being used and by whom, uh, we can better set up and, and plan those as well. So hopefully that gives you a little bit more to, to go on. Definitely a really useful response there. Final two questions now, guys. I think you mentioned Vita there, and this one might be for her or Chris. Uh, where can we find more information on the challenges, such as the assets management, and what information is available on the issue so that we can put forward an informed proposal or a solution? Well, I, th I think probably sort of just describe some of them uh, verbally. Um, I think the best thing to do, again, is it's just it's such a broad topic within housing, waste management and parks, then I would really just encourage people to come and talk to us. Uh, so we have got the face-to-face the -face events. We have got the opportunity to make contact. So please just come and talk to us. Fantastic, Chris. And I think that's also the answer for the last question we've got here, which is from Tom, who's interested to liaise with the team to learn more details of the housing stock under management, how best to organise, please. And, and I think, as I've indicated, Tom, you can email myself, Anisha, or ideally, I recommend you book a place for the in-person event, which is on the 16th of August next week in Birmingham. It's going to be at Steam House, the Birmingham City University building, wonderful building. So it'll be a chance to learn more about the program, meet us in person, and you can ask any direct questions there as well. That link is on the web page landing page, and we'll be sending it out following this call as well. So final call for any questions. Any more questions? Any for any more? I can't see any coming in saying that i would like to thank all the panelists all the guests that have joined us today and all the attendees thank you very much for giving up your time and for all those wonderful questions we're looking forward to engaging with you we're looking forward to seeing your applications and any other queries you may have please feel free to email me them and i'll be happy to respond to them and i look forward to seeing many of you in person next week on the 16th of august at the birmingham steam Ass event Thank you again and look forward to seeing you soon. Take Thanks care. everyone. Thank Thanks you. for joining. Bye. Goodbye.